I'm really glad you came to this talk today. You might not be aware, but we are facing an invisible crisis. It's called food security, and it affects us all. The good news is, I have a battle plan, and I'd like to invite you to join me to start a revolution so that we can change the future of Hong Kong. I started studying how food comes to our tables 12 years ago. I started by selling apples in a London air market. For five years, that was my life. I learned everything about food there. I did a PhD, and then today, I'm an assistant professor at the Baptist University. But at heart, I'm still a market girl, learning, studying still our food system. To better understand the looming food crisis, we need to look at our food supply. So let's go back in time. Just 60 years ago, Hong Kong produced 66% of the vegetables we consume. Do you know how much we produce today? Just 2%. This means we virtually rely on others to provide our everyday needs. This makes our system highly vulnerable. The Nomura Food Index ranks Hong Kong one of the lowest of 80 countries. We're doing just that much better than Sudan, and we're just below Azerbaijan. The Philippines, Kenya, and Pakistan all score better than us. But these are much bigger countries, you might say. True. OK, so let's compare apples with apples. Singapore is 40 places ahead of us. So that is the macro level. Now let me bring this to a more personal level, to you and to me and everyone in this room. In January this year, we experienced a very cold winter, coldest in 59 years. Temperatures dropped to three degrees Celsius. For someone from Hong Kong like me, it was freezing. And the result? Vegetable supply dropped by 20%. Prices went up by 50. Some varieties even 85%. This is how fragile our food system is. We are not food secure. We are food vulnerable. Another reason why we should be concerned is how much food Hong Kong wastes. It's criminal, or at least it should be. Hong Kong throws away 3,600 tons of food every day. That's like filling 250 double-decker buses of food and throwing it away. Some of this is just simply blemished or damaged, or simply in excess, which is perfectly OK to eat. But we ship it to landfill, which, by the way, will be full by 2018. But that's another issue for another day. Supermarkets alone throw away 29 tons of food every day. That's enough to feed 48,000 three-people families. Do you know what waste is? It's just misplaced resources. Food does not have to become waste. Hong Kong prides itself as Asia's gourmet city, a restaurant for every 300 person living here. That's one of the highest figures in the world. But for many, food is not a given. 1.3 million people live under the poverty line. That's 20% of the city's population. One in three elderly is considered poor. One in five children is considered poor. They will have $3,500 a month to live on. This translates into $30 for three meals a day. Could you eat and eat well and healthy on that? I'm not sure I can. Hong Kong is one of the wealthiest cities in the world. How can we allow this to happen? Here's another illogic logic. We produce virtually nothing. 
but you'd say, this is Hong Kong, we don't have land. You'd be wrong. We have 5,000 hectares of agricultural land today. 84% of it is fallow, used as illegal dump sites or open storage spaces. I find that really shocking. Land literally just wasted, lies there doing nothing. When it could be growing food for all of us, organically and sustainably. So we have the perfect ingredients to cook up a food storm. We grow or produce virtually nothing. We depend on other people to provide our everyday needs. We waste thousands of tons of food, and we waste thousands of hectares of land while millions of people struggle to eat. This is the big picture. But these are not separate issues. They are symptoms of one problem. We have a broken food system. So where's the good news in all of this? Well, there's light at the end of the tunnel, or at least a carrot. There is much I want to do to improve our dire situation. There is much I'd like you to do to change the situation. We need to fix our broken food system, make it less wasteful, more secure, and more fair. One of the current solutions we already have is food rescue. There's a hard-working group of NGOs that collect surplus food and distribute it to the needy. Did you know that with just four vans last year, Foodlink managed to save 450 tons of food? Imagine what they could do with 40 vans. There's another one called Tinsho Wai Network. They have five trolleys, and they saved tons of fresh fruit and vegetables from wet markets. Imagine what they can do with 50 trolleys. So let's give them a helping hand. Volunteer, donate, and support the good work that they are doing. But, that's, but let's not only rely on the NGOs to do all the hard work. This is, after all, everyone's problem. Here is where we need the government to act. We need a food legislation. To tackle food waste, we need to legislate against throwing food away. We also need to impose waste charges to transport and dispose of waste. This approach has proven to work. In February this year, France became the first country in the world to legislate against throwing away food. In the same year, supermarket chains got together and made a pact to donate all their surpluses. Denmark opened its first surplus food supermarket. These creative initiatives are saving tons of food from rotting in landfill and cooking up millions of meals for people who are struggling to eat. This is 2016. We need this kind of advanced thinking in Hong Kong. So let's ask our businesses to join in. I'd like to see giant retailers, such as Park and Shop and Dairy Farm, take the lead and donate all their surpluses. And let's make it easier for them to do so. Let's throw another one in and ask the government to pass the Good Samaritan Act so that their acts of goodwill will not create liability risks. To tackle our food supply, we need to tell the Agriculture and Lands Department that we have a food problem. We are food vulnerable. Farming is not a thing of the past. It is our lifeline. Let our land grow food, not junk. So what about you and me? What can we do? There is much we can do. Put food on your agenda. Learn, educate, and teach. Grow. At home, at work, in schools, on rooftops, on walls, in a pot. Start with a lettuce. Learn how food comes to our tables. We can also change the way we consume. Buy the ugly. Learn to cook cook with leftovers. 
Support our local farmers. Eat local, eat seasonal, and eat down the food chain. Demand for the good, not the best. So you see, solutions are available, and you can make changes. So can the government. I'd like to leave you with a vision of a different future. One where everyone has sufficient, safe, and healthy food to eat. Isn't that a future worth fighting for? So join me, and let's change our food future. Thank you.